Welcome to the Alphagenics podcast, where every week we talk to amazing guests from the world of health, well-being, longevity, biohacking, and of course, men's health. So I'm delighted today to introduce Dr. Max Draper, who shares my passion of testosterone replacement therapy. Welcome, Max. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, I'm absolutely delighted. I've been looking forward to this one for, for a long time. And I think for today's chat, we're going to be getting stuck into, aren't we? What is testosterone? Why is it important? Um, and all the benefits of testosterone replacement therapy, if it is low. So yeah. I guess to start with, you know, who is Dr. Max Draper and why are you interested in this, in this subject? Yeah, so I, I'm, uh, a, well, originally I was a, G, well, a doctor now for about 15 plus years, a GP for um, 13 years, roughly, give or take. And then the reason for my sort of passion or um, diversion, at least uh, recently over the last probably year, really, is into the, t the field of testosterone and testosterone replacement is because I myself became quite poorly in a variety of ways, really, from what transpired to be low testosterone and the sort of effects of that. And so it kind of inspired me to look into it more. Um, and through all of that sort of research, it just it didn't feel like work. So it became a bit of a personal passion of mine. And that that led me into going into, you know, the world of testosterone replacement and, and looking at the benefits of that. So it's been a hell of a ride. Um, I, I the low testosterone was bad. The, the, the replacement was good. So it's kind of that's why I'm very passionate about seeking out problems with testosterone and trying to help people who, you know, even if it's 50 percent of what I went through when I was low, then that's that's a hell of a res result to get if you can help them. Yeah, hundred percent. And we talked a lot about this before, but I think your experience was similar to mine and, and similar to lots of men's out there. Which mm -hmm. was, uh, well, do you want to do you want to tell the the viewers uh, how you were diagnosed? What happened? Yeah, I mean, it's so about six or seven years ago, diagnosed with testicular cancer. So late twenties at the time, uh, had one testicle removed. Um, didn't. Didn't really feel too bad for a while, but then um, I would say in hindsight, about a year after um, the surgery, I started to get, in hindsight, mild symptoms of perhaps a dropping testosterone level. And that just got worse and worse and worse. Um, went through the whole rigmarole of just trying to sort of de-stress yourself, sleep more, lifestyle changes, meditation, all of that sort of well-being stuff I really delved into, but basically nothing really worked. Um, and it, had I known more about testosterone three, four years ago, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone through a lot of hard times. So that's hence why I'm sort of passionate to, to sort of get the message out there, really. It's not just, you know, a sex hormone. I think the, the problem with, with testosterone is perhaps the name sex hormone implies it's just about sex and then you get the bodybuilding world which implies it's just for muscle growth and that's sort of it is for both of those things but it's also missing a huge portion of 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 men and you know women's health as well but obviously in a man it is fundamental essentially it's like a foundation to good health in so many ways that it doesn't just involve your erections or your you know performance in the gym so and i'm not sure that message is necessarily um well well known maybe even in medicine itself let alone in the wider community yeah. so hence my passion about it really yeah absolutely and i should probably add that how you're started with testicular cancer isn't how mine started or probably how most men do but the yeah. bit that followed where you had years of low t symptoms which wasn't picked up um mm. by the nhs that's you know unfortunately quite common um mm. and what, why is that do you think um well when i look back i did have a few testosterone levels checked in the lead up 
to being um, deemed as low enough almost. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, and I think part of the issue is um, there probably is a lack of knowledge um, in the medical world. Not a, you know, at medical school, how much training did I get on testosterone? Very little, you know. And then how much do we get following medical school when we go through our junior doctor years on testosterone? Very little, you know, if, if, if it's mentioned at all. And I think, you know, the one round where it comes up might be when someone presents with erectile dysfunction. But like I said, that's missing a whole heap of important functions that it, that it has in the body. Um, so I think there's a lack of knowledge. There's a there's a probably a lack of appreciation of the fact that um, relative deficiency exists as well. It's not just you need a red you need a red mark by your blood result for it to be abnormal. Mm -hmm. And um, and it depends on what guidelines you look at or who you who you listen to in the TRT world. But there is an element definitely that you know just because your level suddenly drops below the magic mark. Was it okay when it was 5% better? Well, probably not. You know, yeah. it certainly wasn't ideal. It certainly wasn't optimal. So there's, there's, it's, it's like the whole of medicine. If a result comes back as abnormal, it's red, it prompts response. And that works for a lot of blood tests, but it doesn't work for testosterone because um, there's a range. And if you're a young man, Perhaps you need more testosterone. So if you are already nearly in red, is that good? That's not a good sign, is it? So you need some sort of work on that, whether it be naturally or whether it be through some form of replacement. So I think the problem is lab results come black, it's normal. If it comes red, it's abnormal. But testosterone doesn't work like that. That's what you find out when you delve more into it. And simply put, not many people have delved more into it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as you say, it's a, it's a big range, you know, depending on yeah. lab you use, the normal range could be anywhere from sort of six to 31 nanomoles in, in the UK. And it doesn't matter yeah. if you're 18 or 108. So you could mm -hmm. have, you could have a reading of you know, 6.2 with some labs and be considered normal. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, I know in the, in the private space, you know, the very minimum that people want uh, to be is is 13 uh, with the british yeah. society of sexual medicine but optimal health is considered plus 20 mm -hmm. so you could say someone would have a normal range but they're 400 percent lower than perhaps where they're going to feel optimal or they're going to feel good which is a massive difference and i think one thing you've said a couple of times which is really important is testosterone is the foundation it's the building mm -hmm. blocks of health and so many aspects of, of a man's life so i think it's a fascinating subject as well and i think it'd be great if you wouldn't mind going into what is it what what is testosterone why is it important why do men need it or why do men and women need it how is it created and i know you've got some info on that board behind us yeah well hopefully it's not too and not too complicated this is a very sort of um simple way of going through it um to to sort of put it in in terms of what is it it's um a sex hormone that's how we term it and the vast majority in a man is made in your testicles um and you know the testosterone basically goes around the body and it has different functions at different sites within the body and it's and what's important as well is that it's not just testosterone that is active in the body as well. That testosterone in certain parts of the body will be converted into um, dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, and estradiol or estrogen. Um, and those themselves as well are very important. They have different functions. Um, we call the sort of um, testosterone and DHT, we could refer to them as androgens, um, but effectively sex hormones we men make dht and estrogen from your testosterone and that all three of them are important um for different reasons and you know how they're made is is basically when we how they're made is basically when we come to this fancy diagram i drew up last night so <laughs> can, 
see it quite well if I turn my laptop a little bit there. Yeah, we, we, we can definitely. And yeah. androgen you mentioned, and androgen um, mm -hmm. just means it's, well, it's a combination, isn't it? It's andro andrology, men, male, mm -hmm. um, and genesis, which is to create. So it's androgen yeah. are the creation of a man, if you like, building blocks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of it's 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 what gives the man um, his signs of puberty. So his secondary, we call them secondary sexual characteristics. So as you go through puberty, that that testosterone and DHT will create the changes that men experience. Um, hence, that's kind of the sort of androgenesis is, is, is the way they sort of termed, I suppose. And, and I suppose one of the big differences between biological male and a biological female is how much testosterone we have. And that makes a, you know, certain elements of change in difference between the two bodies basically yeah does it does it even does it cause the change in our voice uh yeah i think that's due to um i'm not sure if it's te testosterone directly or dht conversion but yeah i mean some when you go on testosterone replacement over time your voice can actually deepen oh right okay some even, people even me <laughs> my, right? my even me i've been on it for 10 years and it's still <laughs> you need a higher dose obviously yeah get it up there <laughs> but yeah i mean i mean like i said because it's it's responsible for so much stuff it's it's and there's there's a lot of crossover with other other things in the body as well so all of those characteristics that develop i mean there are i mean not to go into too much detail i mean i find this interesting perhaps not everybody else would always but if people lack um, genes to convert testosterone into DHT or they don't have the enzyme, then during puberty, they won't get a lot of the puberty changes. So that's how you kind of often you find things out by seeing what happens when you have a lack of something, you know, mm -hmm. so you'll work out how things work based on, well, what happens if you don't have any of it? And that, that's, that's the same in the world of testosterone as well. So a lot of the symptoms of low testosterone you work out with symptoms of low testosterone by replacing it and they improve. So it's a sort of, that's how you work out a lot of the problems related. So yeah. if we sort of go into how it was, is created, I'll try and, I'll try and keep it simple as such. Yeah. Go for it. Yep. So, um, top corner here, these parts, these parts are in the brain. So hypothalamus sends a signal to the anterior pituitary gland via a gonadotrophin releasing hormone. And what that gonadotrophin releasing hormone does is it makes the anterior pituitary gland produce LH, so luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone. And what they do is they travel down in the bloodstream to your testicles and in your testicles that causes spermatogenesis so the fsh on the sertoli cells in the in the testicles makes you make sperm and of note you have to have testosterone in the environment in the testicle in order to make the sperm or effectively make them the sperm and the lh is the main you know the lh is what drives your testosterone so the lh goes down into your testicles it attach attaches to a receptor on a Leydig cell in your testicle, and that makes that cell create testosterone. And what happens then is that testosterone leaves your testicles and it floats around the blood and it does stuff in the body. So that's where we are. So hypothalamus, anterior pituitary gland, down to the testicles, testosterone is produced. And then you have in certain tissues, certain areas in the body, the production of DHT and estradiol or estrogen. I keep calling it estradiol. There's like four, there's, there's several types of estrogen, but mm -hmm. estradiol is kind of like the main one. It's the most active. It's the most biologically important one, I suppose. Um, and then what happens is how this whole thing works. It's a feedback loop. So um, the testosterone, the DHT and the estradiol, mainly the estrogen, um, feedbacks to the hypothalamus and tells the hypothalamus, in essence, we've got enough hormones, you can chill out. You know, you don't need to keep keep stimulating it. And it's a constant feedback loop. 
So this GNRH is, is what we call pulsatile. So it's not a constant stream. It, it will down be down-regulated depending on how much hormone is floating around in your blood. So that's how it all kind of works. And it becomes very relevant when you're talking about, you know, low, well, obviously you and I, we're, we're sort of um, not obs maybe obsessed or maybe focused on testosterone. So if we want to talk about, you know, when you think about where does it go wrong? This diagram for me can just, it contains all the answers essentially. It could be up here it's gone wrong, or it could be down here it's gone wrong, or it could be a mix. And often what you see is a bit of a mix, you know, as men get older, this whole system can get a little bit worse. And, and how much worse can depend on whether you develop symptoms. So yeah, to me, this, yeah. That's, that's the difference between primary and secondary hypogonadism, is that right? Ones that are the yes. top in the brain. Yeah, exactly. So secondary is up here, hypothalamus, pituitary. There's some, some people say it's tertiary, um, but that probably gets too, it doesn't really affect the treatment too much. And then you get your, your primary down here, so testicles. Now, interestingly with me, I lost a testicle. So, I, you know, you'd assume I would have just primary failure. You know, I, I'm running on one, one wheel on a bike. Um, but my, my, this, the FSH and the LH weren't particularly elevated. So it implied that there might have been a mixed picture or whether the pituitary gland just gave up. It just said, do you know what? You're not, you're not responding to me. I'm just going to shut down for a little bit. It didn't fully shut down, but it wasn't elevated like it should have been. Um, so a lot is of this. The, is, the treatment lot. Different? Hmm? is the treatment different? Um, it can influence some aspects of treatment. Um, if you imagine, there's two, to put it simply, there's two ways that you can elevate your testosterone level through, through, through medication, I suppose, medically speaking. Or there's more than, that's a very oversimplification. But sometimes what you're doing is you're trying to trigger the brain part of it to send more to the testicle. And sometimes you're just replacing what the testicle is doing by putting in testosterone, yeah. So some things like Clomid, for example, will affect the feedback loop so that the hypothalamus thinks there's less hormones going on, so it sends more messages down to your testicles. Okay. Right, okay, yeah. And then um, there's things like, um, you know, just plain and simple testosterone. So you kind of shut, you don't need any of this, you don't need them, you just go straight for that, the testosterone. Got it. Okay. And, and that's what most people think of when they think of TRT, isn't it? They don't think of re mm -hmm. replacing, you know, what's happening in the feedback loop with, with clomiphene or something like that, clomid. Yeah. I th well, I think as well, probably most people will get the most symptomatic relief from testosterone because it is kind of like, you know, it doesn't rely on any of this working. It just simply go for what you need. We'll replace it. We'll get it to a good level and you should feel better. So Clomid is, is used often when there's an element of wanting to maintain or even improve potentially fertility and things like that. So it, and, and that then is dependent on whether your testicles can actually respond to the increase in the messengers. Yeah. So they could, yeah. they could have been injured, for instance. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Clomid might not work that well for me because I've only got one testicle and maybe it can only do so much, you know? So that's why it's... That's really, hmm? one, one wheel on a bike, as you said before. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I used that term once and I loved it, so I've just kept with it, I've stuck with it, yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, I, I love it as well. Um, so why, we, we, you said a little bit earlier, you know, you said it's, this is the foundation. Uh, it's mm. what makes a man a man. But if we yeah. go into a bit more detail there, why is testosterone important? Like, mm -hmm. who cares if it goes down? You know what? Let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to an understanding, like I said, that it, it's not just a sex hormone. So if you imagine, um, for example, you know, like thyroid, I think people are more aware of the fact that, 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 that a low thyroxine level, so a low um, thyroid level in your blood can cause a host of symptoms but I would argue that perhaps even testosterone can cause 
a low level of testosterone can cause more symptoms because it's not just a sex hormone as in it's not just relevant to our sexual characteristics our libido our erections which it is it's important for all of them but it's also important for basically nearly every system in the body you know your brain your skin you know your 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 musculature your the the, the sort of um, ratio of fat versus muscle mass you know it helps to or low testosterone certainly can can proceed a, a problem or cause a problem with developing a lot of excess body fat you know particularly around your tummy and around your organs and things which is a really bad marker of overall um, longevity and health so those are just a few things then you go to things like your bone health your your prostate you know your prostate needs a degree of an androgens or you know sort of male hormones and and things to potentially function well or, or appropriately so there's so many things going on and then you talk about your energy system your metabolism your gene expression you know it, it actually affects how your 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 the sort of your epigenetics and things like that so it's when you delve into it you realize there's so much to it and then you realize, ah, oh, man, not not just I was going to swear then, but not, but, but you realize that it's so under appreciated, you know, and, and that includes, you know, recognizing it, treating it, how we treat it, how we monitor it, what risks we express to people. Um, there's a lot of fear around TRT, which is probably unfounded, um, but. Yeah, this is a it's it's a weird it's a weird world to live in when you know more about it. Um, it's a weird sort of it's you have to hold back some rants, let's say. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. There is a lot of fear out there. There were some you know awful studies sixty years ago that linked TRT mm -hmm. to to prostate cancer and uh, cardiac mm -hmm. events, and now we know that that's you know complete rubbish and actually. Has a longevity effect and doesn't do either of those things. But mm -hmm. just to go back to something you said before, you know, thyroid and, and low low T, um, testosterone and uh, the thyroid are both both come from the pituitary gland, don't they? And I kind of think of the pituitary gland as like the body's starter motor. You know, yeah. if it's not doing its job properly. If you don't have thyroxine, if you don't have testosterone, all yeah. the other systems in your body aren't going to be optimized. So yes. Yeah just that struggle to kind of get going uh, and that is one of the symptoms isn't it that a lot of gentlemen like us report is you can still do pretty much anything but it's just mm -hmm. harder it's just, yeah it's just harder yeah. to get going yeah, get yeah. Going through emotions well a lot of what affected me was um almost like a psychiatric top sort of point of view where i could do everything but my my head wasn't working as very well you know in, in many senses my sleep was was rubbish the quality of sleep was horrific um and the energy was just like like you said you could you could pretty much function but it wasn't pleasant you know it was kind of like and that's what they say a lot of a lot of the time about um optimizing your testosterone is you get the reward for the good things that you do and that's related to you know like i said about testosterone having an effect in the brain and, and dht and estrogen all having a role within sort of um, neurotransmitters, you know, dopamine, serotonin. So if you're deficient, you, you're actually not getting that reward for doing good things. You know, if you exercise or if you practice gratitude or if you, you know, eat a nice meal. And that's why a lot of low testosterone can be interlinked with things like depression, anxiety, um, you know, like I said, insomnia, or at least very poor sleep, even though you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. So um it is it is it is so significant and i think it it, it can it can present in many different ways either gradually or fairly severely as well you know yeah that's fascinating i didn't i didn't know that actually so i knew obviously te low testosterone is often misdiagnosed as depression but mm. i guess i'd always still thought that exercise would still cause the same elevation in neurotransmitters what you're saying is that doesn't happen if your testosterone is low, which means you can do as much exercise as you want and he's still not going to feel better. 
Well, to a degree, yeah, because um, and it, obviously we're talking about different levels. If you have a slightly low level, you'll still have, you know, a degree of functioning. But I suppose what I'm, I mean is that those the complexity of the neurotransmitters, the receptors of the neurotransmitters within the brain, we know that testosterone and, like I said, the, the, the byproducts in the estrogen and the DHT have an effect on how effectively those work. So if it's not optimal or if it's not good, then they won't be good. And that literally determines, you know, a lot of how we feel and, and how we feel often influences how we think. So you get into a bit of a vicious cycle there. And then obviously stress can have a knock-on effect on your testosterone as well. So it's kind of like, it is a hard balance to try and strike. And I think when you're, the problem is a lot of people will be low testosterone and like we said, you know, you'll have a lack of energy. So how do you do the stuff to improve your testosterone if you feel like rubbish all the time? So it yeah, becomes yeah. a vicious cycle. That, absolutely. And as you just said there, you know, if, if low T affects how you feel, and how you feel affects how you think or yeah. what you think of directly affects your actions and actually then you're not taking the right actions to make yourself feel better so it's as you say it's a downward spiral and i think that's where trt can have huge benefits because mm -hmm. you interject the downward spiral or interrupt it and then you start spiraling back up the other way and yeah you your energy goes up your mood improves so you start thinking differently, feeling differently, taking different actions. You're therefore exercising more, uh, you know, taking on better nutrition, sleeping better. And, and it's this positive spiral again. Yeah. And I think like we, we always say, don't we, that, that testosterone is the foundation. It doesn't mean that you can do nothing else. You, you don't just take it. It's not like you take your injection or you take your injection in here or you take your Clomid and then it's like, oh, done, sorted. <laughs> yeah. let's eat that let's eat that pizza and sit on the couch and watch netflix um you still have to you know do a lot of that well-being stuff to feel optimal but i suppose what what i sort of um i find or what i feel at least is that if you have a low testosterone level it, it can actually be difficult to correct it because you you're not getting that energy to do the things that you need to do and you're not getting like you said about that positive feedback and it can be a bit of a vicious cycle mm -hmm. and then you then you can even get onto things like cortisol and and and, and stress and, and cortisol and testosterone basically being a bit like um not fighting obviously because the body wouldn't be designed to do that but they do counteract each other in essence they compete for receptors the effect of cortisol often can be quite not completely polar opposite to testosterone, but it can be quite opposing. So when you get a low testosterone, you've got your cortisol coming in and there's nothing to fight against it. So then you get problems with stress resilience. And that's another symptom of low testosterone. You can't deal with stressful situations as well as you used to be able to. So I love it, me, because I just love, I just love knowing why this stuff symptoms wise occurs and even like you know the changes on your blood results that you can see with low testosterone so i have to hold back a little bit sometimes because there's just like stuff going this is so you know intriguing that um it it, it, it is it is it is underappreciated what it does basically is in my yeah. opinion and and how we need to kind of recognize it more and, and treat it better as well and um you mentioned DHT a couple of times. It's on it's on your chart there. It's it, it, testosterone mm. breaks down into that, mm. uh, and that's often one that is discussed by patients when they're worried about losing their hair, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm shortly gonna sue Alpha Genex because my hair is thinning. But, um... <laughs> Tell us about DHT then. Yeah. So yeah, DHT is what is kind of. Um, sort of the, the culprit regarding hair thinning. And, and, and it's, a funny, it's a funny system that the body has where, uh, as a man, our scalp hair or our scalp hair follicles can, if we are genetically predisposed, be affected by DHT. So I'm, lose, I'm thinning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go bald probably within the next, I don't know, year, two, three years. And has testosterone replacement done anything to that? Well, 
it's got my testosterone level back up. So it's got my DHT level better. But that sadly, probably took me where I should have been if I had two testicles to a thinning head of hair. But I was always destined to lose my hair in, in an essence because of my genetics, I, I would argue. Um, so there has to be a, a level of that genetic predisposition to it. Um, you know, a lot of men, most men you see in the street, you know, by the time they reach their 60s, 70s and 80s, you'd be hard pressed to find a man with a really thick head of hair who's not who's not had some sort of hair transplant or something like that because it's just that prolonged exposure to DHT, you know, the androgens having an impact. Um, but directly, it's like, it's, it's essentially what we're doing is you've got low testosterone, so you've probably got low DHT. So when we put you on testosterone, improve how you feel, improve your testosterone levels, we'll probably bump up your DHT levels as well, inevitably. That's a good thing. But, yeah. you know, if you are... Yeah. yeah, it may affect hair loss, but as you say, only if you are genetically predisposed to yeah. hair loss. Because I, I think I probably I probably kept thicker hair for longer because I had low testosterone, but I wouldn't trade off low testosterone for my hair. I'm just going to shave it when it gets thin enough. I'm quite happy with that. Well, there you yeah. go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, okay, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. You've inspired oh, you. You've inspired me not to get a hair transplant. I think you know, just go for the Ross look. Well, I when I first shaved my head, I did it for Brave the Shave uh, for mm. Macmillan, and mm. I hadn't appreciated how thin I had been going until I shaved it off, and then actually saw where it was growing and where it wasn't. Uh, and after yeah. a couple of weeks of being almost in tears, like <laughs> complaining to to Joanne, my wife, like, "Oh my God, I've got no hair." What am I going to do? I'm going yeah. to Turkey. You know, I was, I was going to get my, my turkey hair do um, yeah. and get it all transplanted. And uh, Joanne, she said, look, give it a couple of months, you know, and if you really hate it, we'll go to Turkey and get a hair transplant. Yeah. And after a couple of months, I thought, actually, I quite like it. Yeah. And it's way easier in, in the yeah. morning. I don't have to bring it forward a bit over there. And um, yeah. you, know, you mean just... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just move it. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Loved it. Um, it's freeing. It de it definitely is. Yeah. Although Dran laughs at me now because I think I spend more now on that going to the hairdressers than I did before because I was going to get my beard all shaped and yeah, 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 yeah. all that nice. sort of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so why? I think that's my car alarm going off. I'm going to have to turn it off. Um, why is testosterone dropping? Because over the past 50, 60 years, it's dropped by about 50%, uh, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, it's dropped quite um, dramatically. I'll let you start, and then I, I, I'm going to go... Okay, about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you set an alarm. Um, so why is testosterone dropping? There's probably multiple factors. Um, I was just saying, there's probably... This, no, that's all right. There's probably multiple factors in why testosterone is is dropping. Um, you you look at individual sort of factors, so someone's individual health, and that would include, I think, largely would would be due to body mass. So a lot of people are more overweight than they used to be. You know, that's gone up quite exponentially. And almost if you look at, I suspect, if you graphed body weight, you know, obesity rates you might see some correlation with a testosterone decline. And that's because of that loop again, you can explain it through that. Um, plus, you know, obesity causes a lot of systemic inflammation, which I don't think people are aware of, which can have a knock on effect on your hormones. So definitely obesity, we're less active than we were. You know, that probably has something to say. Sleep, you know, you're talking to is it Daniel? Daniel, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about how a lot of people are fairly chronically sleep deprived. Again, you can go back to the board and say, you know, a lot of your testosterone production is done overnight when you're asleep. Thing, you know, the top half, this top section becomes more active at night when you're asleep, almost because it's kind of like, well, we don't have to, let's get some repairing on the go. And testosterone is obviously uh, anabolic. So it's repair, restorative and reparative. Um, so, yep, sleep, obesity, activity levels, um, <laughs> diabetes, 
obviously comes into a lot of that type 2 diabetes. There's a big link between diabetes and testosterone, whether it be chicken and eggs, sort of, you know, which comes first. Testosterone seems to have an effect on sugar control, sensitivity to insulin. But we know that diabetics are more prone to having a low level of testosterone and there's more type 2 diabetes. So that goes back to that lifestyle argument. And so that's more individually based. Again, people are taking more medication. There's a lot of medications out there that seems to have at least some effect on testosterone. Um, you know, even I read about, and I don't want to, people watching don't stop your statin because of what I'm about to say. But, you know, testosterone is made from cholesterol. And I, so I wondered what happens to testosterone when people take a statin, which is a medication that is designed to kind of reduce your cholesterol and reduce your cardiovascular risk, you know, your risk of heart attacks and strokes. And some people just take it as like a preventative, depending on certain risk factors. Um, so I thought, well, does it lower your testosterone then? Because it's interfering with your cholesterol. And lo and behold, there was a study when you Google it that says, it does, but we don't think it's that significant. Um, and there's a few different tablets that, or medication, I should say, that are fairly regularly prescribed that there's some research to suggest some of them will have a negative effect on your overall testosterone level. Now, I see a lot of patients who are on 20, you know, 20 medication and you wonder, you know, how much do we know about how much these are influencing your hormonal system? 20 different medications. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, I can't even think of 20 things that could be wrong with someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine if someone's got blood pressure, you know, but it's like very resistant to treatment. They might be on four or five blood pressure tablets. And then you add in aspirin, statins, wow. painkillers, all sorts yeah. of things, really. It just builds up. So, yeah. Was it, was it, 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 interesting. So it all sort of feeds back in then, doesn't it? So we've got re reduced activity levels, increased obesity, increased type two diabetes, poor sleep. And they're all, just, they're all, they're all just related. Basically we are a more unhealthy species than we've probably ever been. Yeah. It's strange, isn't it? Because it's kind of like more people are living longer, um, but they're not perhaps living as healthily when they're the sort of like longevity is, 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 is kind of like years at the expense of health. It's kind of a weird way around. Um, but I suppose the other thing I would say about testosterone dropping is what we don't know, but it's kind of being looked into is things like endocrine disrupting chemicals in the environment, you know, phthalates, plastic stuff, um, things, you know, in, even in your soap, in your, some green. yeah exactly and, and 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 a lot of people will kind of poo poo that and say oh well it's you know tiny levels and it's you think yeah, but tiny levels over time because we know a lot of these chemicals that we are ingesting or being exposed to don't break down particularly well even in you know in your body so if they just sat there having an influence then you know over years how much of an effect is that ha ha having hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I drink, you know, my water out of glass rather than plastic mm -hmm. and store mm -hmm. it, store it in copper, um, mm -hmm. a couple of containers just to try and get rid of all of those BPAs and the, and the toxins in plastic. Cause yeah. if you buy a bottle of water in a plastic bottle, you have no idea how long that's been sitting in the warehouse and the yeah. toxins potentially are leaching out of the plastic into the water. Could have been, it could have been in a warehouse for a year. Yeah, and that's quite different from it being bottled yesterday. Um, yeah, it, you can you can rationalise, I think, how that could happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think I'll show you this, Ross. I don't know if you've come across this, and I'm not sponsored by this book, but this book, Estrogen Estro Generation, is a very interesting read about things like the estrogenic. Uh, stuff in the environment and it's not necessarily estrogenic it's probably a misnomer um it's more that they can have an a influence on your you know your sex hormone system um and that book goes into a little bit of detail about it it's quite terrifying really um so if you think about it too much and and, the, and probably the more terrifying thing is if you imagine could the economy and the world run without plastic could it run without these chemicals that they use on your um food 
Could it run without pesticides? Could we feed the world without pesticides? And I don't know if we could. I have no idea. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I don't really know too much detail about economics and um, the, the food industry. But then it's kind of a, 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 a question of, well, what do you, how do you manage then? Because it's everywhere, in theory. Yeah. If, if you read books, I've not read that one, but I've read others like mm -hmm. it. By the end of the book, you're thinking, I'm just going to stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to stay inside. I'm just going to use coconut oil to put, you know, do oil pulling instead of toothpaste. Mm. Toothpaste. Um, mm. I'm only going to what I'm only going to wash in water. Um, yeah, but even that I've got to be careful of because there's there's you know, hormone disruptors in there as well. Yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, the pills so, in the water, yeah. and, you know, exactly. the combined pill in the water. I don't, I don't know. It's really difficult because you go into this stuff and you sound like a a, a bit of a loony case, you know, like a bit of a conspiracy theorist. But then you say. But there is some some research going on about about it, but it, it's it's certainly not let's say it's not common medicine to to to, to think about those things. Yeah, de definitely. Um, so if someone is worried about their hormone levels, whether because you know they've drank too much bottled water, um, <laughs> or just they think their testosterone might be low, yeah, what sort of things should they be looking out for, and what should they do? if they're concerned um so you mean sort of along the lines of potentially seek a blood test out or more of a sort of self-care um approach to improving their own levels naturally which is yeah, sort of, i think probably yeah. both i mean maybe you know are there things they could do themselves to start with mm -hmm. but then if that didn't change how they felt yeah would it be a blood test yeah i think so i, I mean Arguably, you could say if you if you feel like you might have low testosterone, and and we we broached we 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 sort of went over a few of the symptoms that it can relate to, um, then maybe get a blood test and see where you where you lie. Um, a lot of the guy, you know, a lot of the guidance, you know, we mentioned the the, the British Sexual Society, uh, the British Society for Sexual Medicine will mention, you know, if you are on the low end of the spectrum, try lifestyle changes. I mean, if I felt like I might have low testosterone, I would probably just get a blood test, you know, because even even if it's if, if it's a little bit low, well, then, you know, you've got maybe some work to do or consider discussing it with someone who who specializes in it. Um, lifestyle stuff is kind of the reverse of what I said when I was talking about individual risks for low testosterone in terms of why is it dropping? So you want to you want to have a healthy body weight. You want to um, eat a good diet. You probably want to try and avoid endocrine disrupting chemicals as much as you can within sanity, because I think you can go a bit crazy if you overthink it, you know, because like you said, you won't leave the house. You won't go near a car exhaust. Um, for example, you know, you won't go to the supermarket and pick up the, all of the plastic vegetables. Well, not the plastic vegetables. That would be weird. <laughs> vegetables covered in plastic cellophane and things like that. So a lot of the a lot of the optimizing testosterone comes down to optimizing your lifestyle, um, like most things. Optimize your sleep, exercise regularly. You know, probably lift some weights, um, and good diet, good you know body fat levels. You know, probably helps to have a good muscle mass, um, and 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 manage your stress. And those are kind of the main ones. But that is, you know, all of well-being described there, isn't it? Basically, it's like all the foundations of, of, of good, healthy lifestyle, which most well-being people will, will advise, is the same as advice for good hormonal balance, good hormonal levels. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, there's probably been billions of books published mm -hmm. on health and well-being from different angles, but... Yeah. fundamentally if you break it all down they all say the same thing which is you know eat a healthy diet um moving towards whole organic food rather than processed stuff um get good sleep exercise mm -hmm. do something for your mental health whether that's meditation practicing gratitude being part of your community um but all of those things combined are simple yeah inexpensive often mm -hmm. uh, even organic food isn't necessarily as expensive as some people think mm -hmm. uh, so yeah there's lots we can do to optimize ourselves but if i guess 
the message is if doing those things will go on. No, I was just going to say, and more specifically to, to testosterone, but for overall health as well, you might look at things like vitamin D, zinc, that sort of thing, you know, even potentially things like boron, um, you know, vitamins and minerals, because I didn't mention this in the whole general decline in testosterone explanation, but probably vitamin D deficiency might have something to do with it. We don't see enough sunlight and vitamin D and testosterone levels can be quite linked as well. Um, yeah. so that's worth considering when you are sort of feeling a little bit down. And vitamin D, again, is like testosterone, but probably to a lesser extent, is, is probably underappreciated in the world in terms of its importance. It's it's probably misnamed a vitamin. It's it's basically acts behaves almost like a hormone itself in the body, and we don't see enough sunlight because of our lifestyles. So, I would certainly consider taking a decent dose of vitamin D. D sorry, with maybe some K two as well. Um, but yeah, there's certain certain sort of vitamins and things that you can think about with with testosterone as well. Sorry to interject. Yeah. No, no, no that was that was really interesting, but. Because again, we probably miss this bit out at the very start, but a lot of people are scared of testosterone because they think it's mm -hmm. a steroid. Of course, mm -hmm. it is a steroid, but yeah. cholesterol. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think mm -hmm. testosterone is often called the king steroid, but it's made from yeah. cholesterol, mm -hmm. which is a steroid. And vitamin D is a steroid. It's not, mm -hmm. but we think of vitamin being something different altogether. As you say, actually, it acts like a hormone. Yeah, it's, it's very important, not just for your testosterone levels. It's it's a significant one. But, yeah, there's a lot of fear about testosterone. And, and like you rightly said, I mean, that, that the study that originally came out about the prostate cancer um, is about 80 years old now, isn't it? It's about 1940-something. And since then, it's been basically, you know, disproved uh, that, that testosterone is – or testosterone replacement, I should say, is the cause for prostate cancer. Um, but there's, there's always been that sort of media attention or, or I don't, you know, or that, that fixation in someone's brain is very hard to shift. You know, the sort of, um, oh, no, testosterone causes prostate cancer. And I still have people I work with who still would believe that, you know, and the same with cardiovascular disease. There was one study that since, you know, it's about, was that about 10 years ago, maybe now? Um, and that's since been very much sort of looked at and thought, mm, it's not a great study, this one. And um, why yeah. were there women, there were women in it? You know, like as in, you're talking about testosterone, and, but, and you didn't mention the women that were in it. So it's a weird study, that one. Um, and there's a lot more studies that suggest otherwise, but it's like that particular one with the cardiovascular disease really got the media attention. And again, that fixates in people's mind, and it's hard to re sort of um reinvent your thoughts about something because you have to sort of go back to the basics and say why would it why would it be so dangerous it doesn't really make any logical sense but still there's the thought that testosterone even if it's done right as in talking about testosterone placement is dangerous it has to be and it's like well does it though because it's bioidentical so i don't it, it's 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 a strange one. Yeah, we're just putting back in what's supposed to be there anyway, and you yeah. weren't dangerous before, mm -hmm. so why would you be now? Yeah. Um, I think not, many, not many teenagers and, and young 20-year-olds who have their peaking testosterone level have heart attacks. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I get that there's an age-related sort of damage to your blood vessels over time, but what I'm getting at is that they're not walking around with dysregulation of their lipids and, and high risk of heart attack disease and prostate cancer um so it's yeah it's a strange one i think i think a lot of it as well comes down to doing it well though like any treatment the yeah. the, the 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 dosing regime the management how how you sort of monitoring it but that's the same as everything that doesn't mean that the testosterone's the risk itself it's poorly managed might be a risk which is the same as everything yeah. or if you take loads of testosterone, not through appropriate TRT, that carries a risk. Evidently, it would do. That's natural to think. But if you're doing good TRT, there's not really a lot of research to suggest there is a great deal of risk, certainly that we know of. Um, and again, you just have to go back to the kind of logics of it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Well, 
it's been fascinating and i get the feeling we could just chat about it all day um, okay. but is there anything you'd like to to finish with any piece of sage advice for anyone listening um i think have an awareness of testosterone and and, and the importance of it um and if you do feel like you have a, a one two three a variety of symptoms that might indicate a lack thereof or, or that you don't feel optimal you think you think you might not have optimal levels just consider a blood test and that could be you know broached with alpha genix <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. The best <laughs> yeah exactly um <laughs> But that's what I would suggest. And don't just consider it to be, my, my main message is don't just consider it to be a sex hormone. And, it, and, it, and, and you know, don't be scared of it because you can talk to a, someone who knows about it and then they'll be able to tell you the research if you are interested in looking at it. Brilliant. Yeah, I love that. I think it's a brilliant place to end as well. Yeah, testosterone is not just a sex hormone. Mm -hmm. It is the foundation of many aspects of a men's health. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, Max, it's been an absolute pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm sure we'll speak very soon. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for having me.